Hey, everyone, and welcome back. So have you ever, like, I don't know, just felt like flooring as a landlord? It's like this thing. You know it's got to be durable, got to be budget-friendly, but then it's also got to appeal to tenants. Oh, yeah. Like, how do you find that sweet spot? It's a tricky one for sure. Tenants want a place that looks amazing, but can it stand up to, well, you know, renters? It's a balancing act for sure. Big time. Well, speaking of balancing acts, the article you sent over from Wood and Beyond, that blog, about rental property flooring genius move, by the way. They seem to know their stuff, working with all those developers. Yeah, and they lay it all out there. No pushing one type of flooring, which I appreciate, so it's perfect for our deep dive, because they look at both SPC and laminate. Okay, so full transparency, I haven't been, like, you know, researching flooring options in my spare time. So for those of us who need a little refresher, what exactly are SPC and laminate? All right, so SPC, that stands for Stone Plastic Composite. Basically, picture this, like super durable core made from, get this, stone dust and plastics, high-tech stuff, really tough, which is why it's so popular, especially for rentals. Now, laminate, on the other hand, that's built around a fiberboard core, high density, of course, and then it has this photographic layer on top, mimics the look of wood or even tile. Both can give you that natural vibe, but you're right. This decision, it's bigger than just looks. Let's be real. The first thing I look at the price tag. And laminate starting at like eight pounds per square meter. SPC rarely below 20 pounds. That's a jump. Did that surprise you at all? Not really, to be honest. You know, they say often you get what you pay for, especially with flooring. It all comes down to the materials they use, and that impacts how long it'll actually last in a rental, you know, people coming and going. So are you saying laminate, it might seem cheaper up front, but SPC could actually save you money long term? Bingo. Yeah, it's an investment. Think of it that way. The article I read, it said SPC can last 25 years or even longer if you look after it right. Yeah. Laminate, you're looking at 10 to 15 years, maybe even less if you go super cheap. So suddenly that initial cost of the SPC doesn't seem so bad, right? Yeah. Especially if you're in it for the long haul. Plus, and maybe I'm remembering this wrong, but isn't SPC like the champion when it comes to water damage? Oh yeah, definitely a big selling point. The article really emphasized that, that superior water resistance game changer, especially in kitchens, bathrooms, you know, those accident prone areas, hmm. no warping or buckling. So you get that peace of mind, your investment's safe. That's huge. Okay, so durability wise, SPC sounds like it might have the edge, but let's be real. I don't know about you, but DIY isn't exactly my middle name. Right. What about installation with these two? Can you actually do it yourself or are we talking like calling in the professionals for both? Well, they seem pretty gung-ho about both being DIY friendly, especially with that click fit stuff. That's everywhere now. Click fit. Okay, now you're talking. That sounds, dare I say, doable. Yeah, they're designed to be easier. And I mean, plenty of landlords probably tackle it themselves. But you got to be honest with yourself. You know, like what are your actual skills? Sometimes getting a pro in even for these types, can save you a world of headaches and potentially money in the long run. True, true. And wouldn't it be cheaper to get a pro to do click fit than, say, like real hardwood or something? Oh, for sure. They even mentioned that in the article. It's because these are so much simpler to work with, installation costs are naturally going to be less than those really fiddly, labor-intensive types of flooring. Yeah. So, yeah, budget-friendly, even if you're not, you know, the ultimate DIY king or queen. Gotcha, gotcha. So once they're down, they're both pretty low maintenance. Did the article say anything about cleaning, things to watch out for? They kept it really simple, regular sweeping, hit it with a damp mop every now and then. Seems like that's all you need for both, which makes sense, right? Right. I mean, durability is one thing, but landlords want something tenants can actually manage. And let's be honest, tenants aren't always the most, shall we say, <laughs> careful. No comment. Okay, so... Practical stuff aside, we got to talk aesthetics. The article mentioned something about sticking to classic looks, you know, for wider tenant appeal. Yeah, it's tempting to jump on the latest trend, but then it's out of style just as fast. Right. They were recommending, you know, sticking with those timeless options. Think natural wood tones, plank style, that kind of thing. Always classy, never goes out of style. So nothing too crazy, no neon green carpets or anything like that? Uh -huh. Not quite. But they did say to avoid really light colors or trendy patterns, anything that'll show damage easily, basically. Oh, got to uh, find that sweet spot, style, A and D, practicality, like we were saying. Understated elegance. I like it. Okay, before we jump into how tenants see all of this, big picture and all, one detail I have to ask about underlay. Not exactly the most glamorous topic, but they seem pretty insistent on it. The unsung hero of flooring, honestly. And yeah, no, they were really hammer home that point high quality underlay essential for both SDC and laminate. It's not just about like 
and making it soft underfoot. Right. There's got to be more to it. Spill the tea. Well, first off, good underlay is like a sound barrier. And that is huge E in rentals. Think apartments especially. Noise travels right. And so that can make or break your relationship with the neighbors, not to mention the tenant's experience. Ooh, good point. Peace and quiet. That's what everyone wants. Exactly. And bonus, it actually helps your flooring last longer. It's like a buffer. So all those footsteps, all that wear and tear, it's absorbed. You know, win-win comfort, noise reduction, and it protects your investment. Okay, underlay, officially on the must-have list. So we've tackled durability, installation, even the mighty underlay. But let's talk tenant appeal. The article mentioned SBC often seems like the fancier option. Why do you think that is? It's funny how that works, isn't it? Because both can look really good. But yeah, SBC have that, I don't know, that air of quality, you know, modern, sleek. That's so true. I was just thinking, I stayed in an Airbnb recently. They had this gorgeous SPC. It looked just like old hardwood, you know, instantly made the whole place feel more like high-end inviting do you think tenants pick up on that like would they pay more for that kind of vibe do you think oh absolutely i mean they've mentioned it in the article but it's something landlords should really pay attention to because picture this two identical places right one's got laminate the other's got that spc that flooring could be the difference the tenant might even be willing to pay a little extra just for that feeling like that saying first impressions are everything and with rentals that's definitely true for sure for sure. And think about it. If a tenant's happy to spend a bit more because the place just feels, I don't know, more looked after, more modern, they're probably going to take care of it too, right? So it's a win-win. It's not just about what WE like then. It's about understanding what appeals to, well, the kind of people we want renting from us. Exactly. You got to put yourself in their shoes. What's their first impression walking in? Is it, yeah, this feels like home. Flooring can make or break the whole vibe. It's crazy. It really does. And that actually makes me think about something the article didn't really touch on, that psychology of design, you know, like how it affects us on yes. an emotional level. Oh, okay. I'm listening. So we know certain colors, textures, even patterns, they trigger stuff in our brains. Right. Think about those wide plank floors, light wood, mm -hmm. super popular right now. They make you feel calm. The space feels bigger, airier. Yeah. Light colors do that. Open everything up. So landlords need to think about what kind of feeling they want to create, yeah. right? What's the message? It's a strategic. It's not just, oh, I like that color. It all ties into that bigger tenant experience. Because at the end of the day, we're not renting out square footage. We're renting a feeling, a certain lifestyle. We've gone deep today. From the nitty gritty of durability and cost, all the way to like the psychology of design, flooring is no joke. Huh? No joke. But see, by understanding all the options, the pros and cons, landlords can make smart choices. Mm -hmm. Good for the wallet. A and D, good for keeping those amazing tenants happy. Music to my ears. Well, there you have it, folks. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just dipping your toes into the rental game, remember your flooring choice. It's an investment, not just in the property itself, but the whole experience you're creating. Choose wisely. Thanks for joining us for another deep dive. We'll catch you next time.